Good morning, Sanbonani, Dumelang, Mulweni. Let me firstly thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to interact with you at a very important and difficult time, both for South Africa and for the world, uh, on a very important question uh, or set of questions around uh, leadership. Adrian Gore set the right tone uh, for this morning, uh, a tone of optimism, a tone which indicates lots of possibilities for us as South Africans, and he's also given us an interesting model repeat discovery 33 times, and we could solve the jobs problem in South Africa. Uh, one of the undertakings I was going to give you is that I won't mention the word tax today. <laughs> but uh, if amongst you there are entrepreneurs who want to create 33 discoveries, maybe we can discuss something at lunchtime. <laughs> South Africa, and, and indeed the world, finds itself within a very complex set of uh, factors that are imposing themselves upon us and sometimes that we've created ourselves. Uh, last night as I came down from Cape Town, uh, sitting next to me was a German businessman. And amongst the many things we discussed for almost an hour and a half was one about South Africa and uh, its transition from apartheid to democracy. And he said it in a very interesting way. He said, it's unbelievable how you in South Africa have achieved the change you have, and there's no bitterness amongst your people. At the same time, with a little bit of shyness, he said, but you do have a problem around the Gini coefficient. And I think those two remarks capture South Africa. The phenomenal success we've had in our political transition and the challenges that remain with us in respect of tackling the Gini coefficient, as Adrian pointed, pointed out as well. We as South Africans have a lot going for us. Wherever you go in the world, particularly if they know that uh, you've been a political activist here, but I'm sure many of you experience it as well, the question is, how did you manage this? How did you not get into the kind of conflict and despair that many other parts of the world got themselves into? And uh, it's something that when we are living within South Africa itself, we tend to forget. And it's something that we need to remind ourselves about. Of course, today we have uh, the number one spot in cricket to add. And with apologies to the British High Commissioner who is here, we even get the England captain to give up cricket. Um, hopefully, we'll do equally well in, in rugby. As the swimmers in South Africa and the kayakers and the athletes have done us proud, and I hope that those of you that are connected to soccer will influence them to emulate the other sports, but I remain a bit more skeptical about that. For people like yourselves, I suppose the phrase M&A makes a lot of sense, mergers and acquisitions. If you think about South Africa, it's a huge merger and acquisition exercise. It's a merger amongst different cultures, different backgrounds, if you like, different ideologies, different worldviews. And yet, 18 years later, this merger is working. It has a long way to go before we can say that we've created a new South African culture. But nonetheless, we can certainly say that the spirit of Mandela and Sisulu and Tambo and to some extent, even de Klerk and the people who worked with uh, Mr. Mandela to create this future is a culture that is beginning to permeate us, a culture which uh, says that we've got to give and take, a culture which says that if you want to reach your goal, you have to find some compromises, a culture which says that uh, a vision of the future is a very powerful tool, 